Heroku got rid of their free tier. Ah! If you're a developer like me and you don't like to spend money, but you do like to build stuff, I'm gonna show you a new place that you can host your Node.js backends for free. What's up everyone? Let's walk through how to deploy your Node.js with TypeScript API to Hero not Heroku, to Render, which is a pretty cool platform that is very similar to Heroku in functionality and also has an amazing free tier. Now this is actually part three of a series on building a TypeScript API using Rapid API and Zeta. So Zeta is a serverless database that's really neat, it's awesome, you should check it out, and it's part of this demo. And then Rapid API is actually the official sponsor of this video, and so at the end, we're gonna deploy this API not only to Render, we're also gonna make it available inside of the Rapid API Studio so that we can sell this API to other people. Rapid API also has a VS Code extension called the Rapid API Client, and inside of it, you can test out your different endpoints. You can see these are the different ones that we used in this demo, get, post, put, delete for this jobs API. Now, the cool thing about this is these are associated with projects inside of Rapid API, so you could use these across different devices. Someone else could connect to this project and they can be associated with the project that ends up being the one that you use to sell your APIs on Rapid API. So we'll see a little bit more about this throughout the video. So we're gonna walk through those different steps if you wanna go back to part one, you can check out the link up here. And most importantly, you can have a link to the actual GitHub repository. So here's the previous two parts. You can find the previous videos on there as well, and then have all the source code, which is what we're going to deploy. So inside of Zeta, I have a basic uh, table here for jobs. This is a jobs API. So we have the company, the title, the job link, geography, et cetera. Uh, I know a lot of people are being let go. There's lots of layoffs happening. If you or your company or a company you know are hiring, leave job links in the description, or in, not in the description, that's for me to control, in the comments below so other people can find them too. I think that would be really nice. So I've got basic amounts of data in here, and then I have the project running locally. And so I can run this with npm run start dev, and then uh, basic API, so inside of the index.ts file, we have slash API slash jobs for git post put and delete route. So your basic CRUD application, and then just to show you this works, we can go to localhost 3000 slash API slash jobs. And that should show the data that comes back, which in this case is just two of them. So that works. Now we wanna actually get into the deployment. So you can create your own uh, project. You can clone this one if you want to, whatever you want, just make sure you have a GitHub repository that you can then access inside of Render. So here's an existing application that I've already deployed and testing, but I'm gonna go to the Render homepage. I've already signed in and I'm going to create a new web service. This is the name that is used for basically hosting Node.js applications. Now inside of here, I'm gonna search for that project. So it's uh, Node.js API with TypeScript uh, and Z Rapid API and Zeta. And then we'll call this JQQ Jobs API. And I think this needs to be unique. So in my case, because I do way too many demos, I'm gonna call this two. Now my closest region is US East. So that's what I'm going to do. And then the root repository of this, uh, this is not a like mono repo, so it is just the basic uh, root of the repository. We're running in Node. Now, the one thing I did do, or actually two things that I did do from the previous video to now is inside of the package.json file, I specified that I need an engine of Node greater than or equal to 18. And that's because the Zeta SDK is looking for a built-in fetch and that's not available until, um, unless you use a feature flag or something, until node 18. So we're just gonna make sure that we require that. And then it's gonna ask us what the build commands are. So we're gonna run npm run build. And this may be slightly tweaked. I think it actually is. So the build command will run an npm install, then a remraf of the build directory, and then TSE, which actually does the compiling. So the install will make sure that all the packages, including remraf, are available during the build, uh, RemRAF will delete any existing build information to make sure we get a clean set of files. And then TSE will actually do the build transpiling TypeScript into JavaScript. So that will work. And then our start command is going to be uh, npm run start. So that is this command here, which will run the index.js file from the uh, build directory. So the thing that actually gets built. So those are all the things that we need and we can go ahead and create this web service. It'll take a couple seconds to spin up. So while we're doing that, I wanna go ahead and go over to Rapid API Studio 
And we've already in the past created a new project in here, an API project. And if we look inside of here, inside of request, you can see we've got our CRUD request already kind of saved in here. Now, the really cool thing about this is that there's an extension inside of VS Code that you should check out as part of this video, uh, which allows you to define those things and you can change between different projects up here. So I'm already signed in. You could sign in and it will allow you to connect to an existing project and you'll see it populates these requests. So while I'm running this thing, I could actually come in and test these and see that I get all my data back and I could do a post and a put and delete. I could test all those things, which is really nice. Uh, so the other thing that we'll need to do inside of uh, Rapid API to make this available and sell is update the hub listing and add endpoints inside of here. So we'll come back to that in a second and see if this deployment to render is done. Uh, not quite, so it's actually still running the build, which is fine, that will take a few minutes. So we can actually start to uh, work on this publishing part inside of Rapid API. And the cool thing is we can go ahead and assume what the name of this web service is, or what the URL is, because they give it here, even though it's not finished deploying. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna come into my hub listing and this is going to be, uh, you can get a logo, you can uh, select a category of like, what type of data are we working with? Do they have one for jobs, maybe career? Got a lot of things in here, not career. We can just go with uh, general there. We can say this is an API for developer jobs. We could add more information in a readme. We could add documentation. Uh, the documentation is actually going to be pretty straightforward though, because it's going to come from the actual endpoints that we add in here. So we don't have anything deployed at this homepage, but we could put a, uh, a simple uh, web page just saying this is the API at this, uh, at the root of that project that we just deployed, terms of use, et cetera. All right, so one of the things that you will do is make sure that this thing is available to people when you actually finish it. Uh, but in the base URL, I'm going to add in the URL that we just created. So this is for our deployed application inside of render. So then inside of the endpoints, we can create our one endpoint. We're gonna make available the get endpoint to get the actual uh, jobs. So we can call this get jobs. We can say get all developer jobs. Now this is going to be at slash API slash jobs. We don't need any query parameters, et cetera, but the cool thing is they'll kind of generate snippets for people as they want to use these APIs. And so that's really all we need inside of this endpoint. That's great. So we have this ready. Now, if you want to actually make money from this, you can come in and monetize and you can decide like what are the different rates that people can use? How many requests would they need to make to pay for it, et cetera. It's so easy to configure in here. So if you wanted to make money off that, you absolutely could. So let's come back to our endpoints and I wanna go back and see if this is finished. It's uploading the build, so we still have time to talk a little bit more. Keep in mind, this is on the free tier of render, so builds are a little bit slower, which is totally fine, again, for a free tier. It's better than having to jump to a paid tier, although if you get to the point where you need that and it's worth it, it's definitely worth investing in. So one of the things I want to uh, come back and see is how to actually test that this is working. And so there's a button in here for view and hub this is what it's gonna look like inside of the Rapid API Hub. And you can see that you get code snippets for your different endpoints and you can test the endpoint. But first we need to actually make sure this thing is working. And actually you can see that we got an error when trying to actually start this application. And that's because we got one, we forgot one crucial ingredient, which is to actually add our API key for our database URL. So inside of my local.env file, I'm just gonna copy this API key. And then we'll go and add this inside of our settings for this application. So under settings and then uh, actually it's environment, sorry, under environment, we can add an environment variable. I'm gonna paste that whole thing and then paste the value associated with the key and the value part. Save changes, I think that should be saved. Then do a deploy latest commit and we should come back and see that this deployed successfully and then we can go and test it out. And this application is now running successfully. Yay! All right, so with that running, uh, we could just test out the endpoint directly if we wanted. So we can copy this URL, put it inside of the browser and go to API slash jobs. And hopefully that will return back to us some jobs. So that looks good. The thing is fully deployed. And then inside of the Rapid API client, now we can test this thing. Or not the Rapid API client, this is in the actual uh, dashboard. The Rapid API client is the VS uh, Code 
extension for uh, testing your endpoints locally or other endpoints if you wanted. But this is inside of the hub where people would actually sign up and use your API. So we can test this endpoint and we should get back some data. So inside of this data property, you can see we get our two records back. Now notice that we didn't add endpoints for the other CRUD, uh, for the other CRUD routes uh, for uh, create, update, or delete. We're just doing the read. That makes sense from a public perspective, although the rest of them are not available in Rapid API. We would then need to go and protect those in some way to make sure that only the correct people would be able to update and delete data, et cetera. So there's still some other things that we would do, but we're able to take a Node.js project that uses TypeScript, that uses uh, Zeta as the database, that uses Rapid API when we were developing and testing the APIs. So deploy that to render on a free tier, which I think is what a lot of us were really struggling to figure out what do we do next after Heroku. So that's the answer. So thanks to Rapid API for being a sponsor of this series. It's been a ton of fun. I think it's been really good. Let me know if there's any other missing pieces you think we should cover. Uh, but that's a fully deployed Node.js TypeScript API that then is able to be listed inside of Rapid API to make available for the world and then to sell it and lock it down for different uh, rates and use cases, et cetera. So hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll catch you in the next one.